Phase one of our four phase fall recruitment campaign outline starts with getting information home to potential scouting families early. You may want to inquire with your principal if there's a blast email or a virtual backpack that goes out to families early in the year. Families decide early on in the school year or even before the school year begins as to what their boy will be getting involved in. Getting some initial detail home to families is critical. When talking to your principal in the spring, this would be something to inquire now about. This would also be a good time to ask about flyer distribution policies. Every school has their own. Some school districts take a low key approach and others need flyer designs to approve and distribute from their central office. And that may be earlier than you'd initially planned. Getting to know what the school needs can help you build your plan. As I mentioned, many families are looking or shopping for programs as soon as school begins. Executing phase one will ensure that the scouting product is on the shelf as an option for today's structured, scheduled, and busy families. Phase two takes scouting into a curriculum night, a back to school night, or a meet the teacher night. An organized presence from your pack at one of these events can showcase all your program has to offer. To ensure you have the right tools and the right amount of people to help you handle the flow of people and questions you'll get, make sure that you've got some of your trusted team present with you. Ensure that the PAC has a program calendar established and printed to distribute to families interested. Families will want to know what type of time commitment scouting requires, and nothing can sell your program more than being organized with a program calendar for the coming year. Even if you don't know your entire year, Simply give them a three to four month look at your PAC's calendar from September to December. In addition, have a directory of PAC leaders with phone numbers and email addresses so interested parents can reach out after the curriculum night. A couple other tools that are helpful for these events are, of course, sign-in sheets, PAC pictures, and youth and adult applications. There are many ways to make these events fun and successful, and it's simply a great way to showcase your PACS program. Your district membership chairs and district executives will have plenty of resources as you get closer to that time of year. While all four phases are extremely important to our goal of 100% of the youth hearing the message about joining scouting, phase three, boy talks and school night for scouting is the most critical phase to execute. So what is a boy talk? When should they be done? Where should they be done? How long should they be? And who should do them? A boy talk is simply a commercial for scouting conducted in the school and during school. It's a tried and tested way to excite the boys about all the fun scouting offers. Since we want to be mindful of curriculum or classroom time, we want to, in general, take no more than five minutes. There are several types of boy talks. Some are more effective than others. However, it's important to know what works best and use that as a starting point with your principal. The most effective boy talk is going classroom to classroom and spending four to five minutes in each classroom talking to the boys. Keep in mind this can take up significant time, especially if your elementary school has many classrooms. This can be a very good option for the school because it doesn't require moving kids down the hall for an assembly. In all cases, make sure you bring help. Think about too deep leadership, but you'll certainly want some assistance for a classroom to classroom effort. The individual attention your presentation gets through this type of talk is unmatched by the other types. The second type of talk that yields good results are assembly by grade or by Cub Scout program. Giving your presentation to all the first graders does allow you to tailor your talk to their level of learning. Remember age appropriate and grade specific language. Those first graders are not going to grasp the information that you'd give to fourth and fifth graders. And those fourth and fifth graders are going to get pretty bored if you talk to them like they're in first grade. The assembly by grade can work well, but just know your audience. 
The third best option is an all grade assembly. Some principals may enjoy this option because it's quick and easy, or you might get partnered up with an assembly that's already scheduled or right at the end of the lunch period. If your school goes with this option, just know that there will be a bunch of kids in one room and you may need to take more than five minutes to ensure all the kids get the message. I always like to spend an extra minute with the first graders after the rest of the classes are dismissed, just to make sure they really understand what all that excitement was all about. Lastly is the lunchroom talk. And just depending on your school and how lunch times are scheduled, this can be a good way to reach kids. But remember, there are a bunch of distractions during lunchtime. And sometimes there's a flow of kids coming and going. The biggest tip is know what you're getting into. Talk to the lunchroom monitor when you first arrive in the lunchroom. They're great resources. No matter what type of boy talk you're able to coordinate with your principal, make sure you have their support. Again, your district's membership chair or your district executive can be very helpful in conducting boy talks. The entire professional staff at the Simon Kenton Council stands ready to assist you in your full recruitment effort. The person conducting the boy talk will want to ensure several goals are achieved. The first is get the boys excited. The second is instruction on taking home the flyer. Yes, you have to drive that point home. And third is to make sure they bug the heck out of mom and dad about going to the school night to sign up for scouting. Essentially, the Boy Talk is a commercial, not only advertising scouting's fun, but it's really advertising your packed school night to join scouting. It's the opportunity to get that invitation. The second part of phase three is the school night. So the kids are extremely excited about joining because you just did an excellent Boy Talk, and now they're coming back to the school to join. The school night should happen no more than 24 to 48 hours maximum after that boy talk. And it's important to keep the boy talk and school night close together so the message stays fresh in the minds of the boys, not to mention the parents. You will also want to send an additional flyer home a week prior to the school night so parents can mark their calendar that you're coming. This will be just one more reminder because you also sent a flyer home in the back to school packet. For the school night, it's important to remember that the location of this event is in the title of the event, School Night for Scouting. It can be tempting to use the location of the church or organization where your pack meets. It, it seems easier, right? You've got the key, the pastor knows that your pack's there every Thursday night, right? Wrong. The school is neutral territory and it isn't affiliated with any church, any other group in the community. It's important to remember that scouting is faith-based, but non-sectarian. New parents don't know that yet, and some may assume they're signing up for a pack of a particular religious denomination when the join night is held at a church. They don't understand how scouting works yet, and this may be a barrier for some folks for joining scouting. Also, the school is usually centrally located and easy to communicate to the boys during the boy talks. Come out and join scouting tomorrow night right here at the school. That's what you want to be able to say. Some schools may charge a fee for uh, custodial time, something like that, but usually it's very nominal. And I'd encourage you to look into your PACS budget and invest in your membership campaign if that's the case. It may just bring in a couple more boys, and in my mind, Let's talk about how your school night can be organized, and there's primarily two ways. The first is like a sports or soccer style sign up. Very fast, about 20 minutes where essential information is given out to parents and applications and monies are collected. Parents are then informed with more detail about all the nuances of Cub Scouting at a parent meeting prior to your first PAC meeting. The second way is to go into more detail about Cub Scouting meeting schedules, ranks, and, and that sort of thing, and collect applications and monies. This will typically take a little longer, close to an hour. If you choose this style of school night, make sure you have at least two leaders to work with the youth to keep them occupied 
while the parents complete the necessary paperwork. Things can get a little chaotic without entertaining the youth, keeping them active, hopefully in some kind of scouting related activity. Either way you choose, make sure you have a PAC calendar, a PAC directory, and you have to be prepared to take applications and money that night. Put it this way, the customer came in the store and is ready to buy. Work to capture those applications. If folks look like they have more questions or concerns, utilize someone in your pack that can monitor for people that are looking a little bit overwhelmed. There are many helpful tips and hints about how to run your school night effectively under the Membership Resources tab at the Simon Kenton Council website, www.skcbsa.org. That includes sample agendas and floor plans. So take some time to review those resources, see what's useful to you. And as mentioned, utilize your district's membership chair and also your district executive for guidance and assistance. Phase four is the final phase of this year's fall recruitment campaign, which you can see takes place in the spring and the summer and well into the fall. Think of this last stage as a catch-all event for any boy that did not get the chance to come out to your school night or, or maybe pass by your table at curriculum night with their parents. This extra attempt may not yield the volume of your initial effort, but it can be an excellent approach to pick up a few families to give every boy in your PAX area the chance to join scouting. Oftentimes, these can be a community rally working with other PACs in your town to produce a unified recruiting effort. Or it could be orchestrated for all the elementary schools in a school district. Libraries, fire stations, or community centers can be good locations. The important part is to plan early for a catch-all event not just when you think you need one. And know your date at the top of your school year so you can move quickly into this phase immediately after your school night or let people know when that secondary opportunity is if they can't make your school night. A good time frame would be early in October. Well, those are the four phases of this year's fall recruitment effort. Please review other sessions of this online training for more information. I want to thank you for everything you who are watching do for scouting and for everything that you're doing to expand the program and to offer the invitation to come and participate in one of the greatest youth opportunities for leadership and character development has. Cub Scouting and the Boy Scouts of America thanks you for your work to expand our reach, our invitation, and our opportunity to serve. Thank you.